Hey guys, it's Angie. And I'm trying to get up this morning and get things going. Um, and I know that I'm going to try to start uh, adding things to my life instead of just concentrating on things that were in my life. And, and that's what I have to get up here and do. This morning, I will be getting up to go and do hair. Do a young lady's hair. Um, and a close friend of mine's daughter. Um, and also and go over my best friend's house. I didn't get a chance to spend my her birthday with her, but I was with her in her heart. And um so I'm gonna go over there and spend uh some time with her and then I'm gonna go out and try to do some um DoorDash or something to make some money. Um and right now I'm gonna read um I got this little book. I don't remember who gave me this little book, but it's called The Lord Hears Your Cries. And right now I need God. I need him all the time. All the time. He keeps me strong. Because I know I didn't make myself. And I know as in the beginning of time, God had to have made us. And it just wasn't a burst in the sky. Somebody had to cause the burst in the sky. So um, this says, this is... um. The scripture is going to come from Job 21, 7, 9, 14, 16. But it, um, this isn't part of the scripture. It just says, you may be angry with God and believe that God is uncaringly allowing the abuse to go on. Sometimes evil people prosper in a way that is beyond your understanding. God sees your suffering and understands your questioning. So I was just like, you know, the guy who um, got me fired. We're out already. I mean, when he told me that he felt that I was too tired to drive, um, and he got this other guy to come in and back him up so he could feel good about what he was doing, making me lose my job. But that was okay because I don't think God meant for me to be at that place because right after I left, there was a bad accident with one of their trucks. And so God just meant for me to leave that place. It didn't mean for me to be to work for that place. And so I have to look at it like that, like something new and something better is going to happen and not dwell on what happened there. When in my heart, I would have left a long time ago as soon as I saw things were not going great. I usually just walk away. I'll walk away from a job in a minute. Uh, but this time I really tried to stay, but I think it was a mistake. I should have just walked away after the first you know, time I felt that I wanted to walk away. And uh, I'm going to read this. Um, it says, why do, pe do evil people live so long and gain such power? They have no worries at home and God never punishes them. You know, that's what it's saying here. But I don't think that's a scripture. Okay, this is the scripture. Those who are evil say to God, all powerful, leave us alone. Don't bother us with your teachings. What do we gain from praying and worshiping you? We succeeded all on our own. And so I keep away from them and their evil schemes. And so I keep away from them and their evil schemes. So I think that is the part that I have to say. And then it says, pause and ask yourself, how do I feel controlled and manipulated by the violence? How do I feel when people who do wrong sometimes seems to prosper? Do I feel that God is allowing these people to keep hurting others? And that's my thing. When I see people hurting other people, I just want to either let them hurt me or stop them from hurting people, you know, by talking to them or just being their friend and showing them that there's good people out here. You don't have to be evil, but that's not my job. That's God's job. And I'm not that strong to fix those people. And I really liked that when, I, you know, it took me 42 years, you know, I was 42 years old before I realized that I can't fix the evil people. Can't do nothing with them, but shut up and pray. Um, and then it says, is anger with God making me feel distant from God or from others loving relationships that can support me? Do I feel angry at God for allowing the violence to go on? Hmm. Those are questions you ask yourself. I don't feel angry with God. Um, and I've figured out what it is. It's my mouth. It's my mouth. And right now I'm praying 
in my mind. I'm asking God to control what I say. No one can know what I'm thinking. But God, people always can hear what you say. So I'm asking God to control my mouth. And help me say and do the right things so that I can prosper. And I don't mean prosper monetarily. Is what church has turned into now. Which I don't even like tending church because it's all about just money. Um, and when you prosper in health. And you prosper in love. Money falls at your feet. And people don't realize that. And, and, and it's not about. You know, when you go to church and there's a big church and you're, um, you know, talking to other people, it's the same as going to a big meeting and going to a lot of meetings and talking with a lot of people. You are going to get an influence or someone's going to influence you to do better. Someone's going to give you information to do better, you know, and then the church tries to turn around a lot of the new churches. I'm not going to say the good churches turn around and say, oh, that was God. Because you did this in God's house. They could have did it at a, a at a meeting somewhere and met somebody. You know, they could have did it at McDonald's and met someone that can excel them in their lives, you know, and saw them doing something great on their table while they were eating their food. And said, what are you doing? I'm interested in what you're doing. I want to invest in you. So God is everywhere. And the, I'm not bashing the church, the Baptist church. I'm just saying a lot of these churches preach and get members in their church promising them money and, and, and monetary gain and blessings, a house, a car. That's what they talk about. I've heard preachers talk about their cars, their houses, and you know, they don't talk about their health. They don't talk about the love, you know, that they have for their family. They don't talk about that. They just talk about money. A lot of the preachers and they just like, that's what it's all about now. And I don't get it. You know, what about helping each other? What about making each other feel good? What about taking the violence out of our hearts? What about taking the violence out of our neighborhoods? What about taking the guns away from my children? Because a lot of these parents know they have guns in their houses and they're not taking them away. So I don't mean to go off into the preaching, but I'm just saying a lot of these parents know their kids have guns in their houses. They know their kids are out past 12 and 1 o'clock. What are they doing? Are they at the library? I'm quite sure they're not, you know. Are they at work? I'm quite sure they're not if they don't have a job. So you know what your children are doing and you know what to do to fix these problems, but people aren't doing those. So going back to what I was reading about, you know, allowing evil people to ruin your life. And I have allowed evil people to uh, be in my life instead of wiping those clean and just keep starting over. If you got to start over every day, just start over every day. And that's what I'm telling myself to do. I'm going to get up out. I'm in the bed. I'm going to get up out this bed. Give me some Epsom salt. Because my body's still hurting. me picking up all those boxes that I picked up at that Dollar Tree thing. At that account. <laughs> it still hurt. So I'm going to get in here and give me some Epsom salt. Soak in me a hot bath. And I'm going to go do hair. Then I'm going to go see my best friend. And, and, and go see how she's doing her day after birthday. Um, you know, to see how she's feeling. And, and then I'm going to get on the road and make some money and and look forward to my new beginning at my new job. And that's what you have to do. You cannot worry about who else prospers. You cannot worry about who else gets money. You cannot worry about who else, you know, you can't worry about that. You can't worry about outside things that you have no control over. But what? Because a lot of people will think they can take control over those things by robbing banks, by robbing those people, by hurting people. That's when people think that they can take what God can do in their hands. And it doesn't work out well. When you walk away, walk away with God. And God will lead you to the right place. And that's what I'm doing. But I have to push myself. And I have to ask God to help me. Get behind me. Push me in the right direction. And that's what we all have to do. Ask God to push you in the right direction. To give you strength to uplift you. Otherwise, you will sit there. I know because I've sat there. I have sat. 
I have gone to the bathroom, come to my room, go downstairs, eat, come back to my room. I have done that. And I'm constantly thinking about what I've done in the past and I'm not excelling and I'm not doing anything in the future. Yeah, I have accomplishments. Yeah, I finished truck driving school and I thank God for that. It was very hard for me. But I have to go beyond that. I have to continue to work. Continue to do something. I can't give up because of one bad apple. There are plenty more apples on the tree. So thank you guys for watching my video. I'm going to be doing more videos every day. Uh, on YouTube, um, even if they're just me just talking about what I'm going to do for the day or what I'm doing. Um, so you guys keep on doing it. This is Angie and I'm doing it. Have a blessed day. Bye-bye.